between the mid and the support position. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. We actually saw G2 do the same Galio Bromban yesterday in their match against Fnatic, if I recall correctly as well, alongside the Lissandra. So it seems to just be their current set of standard bans. Carthus removed by Misfits. Last ban here is a lot of different options. Things like the Aurelia, maybe? Jarvan also, since it is a flex pick, or if you just leave it open. Um, a lot of teams will feel fine leaving Jarvan open as long as they have the Sejuani to answer it or to kind of pick into it. Well, Misfits taking their time, deciding exactly where they want to go. They will remove the LeBlanc from the cards. And now G2 have the first pick, have a lot of different options. I'd like to see something spicy. I sincerely doubt we'll see the Shivana, but you never know. Could be that AP Shivana in the jungle that's been terrorizing solo queue, the Wizard Lizard. <laughs> the Wizard Lizard instead going to be the Draven for perks down towards that bottom lane. Currently sitting very high up on the pick ban ratio is Draven. And you also have to think it's a denial away from Hansama. That said, Lucian is still open and available if you want to meet fire v fire and take another uh, hard carry ADC down there. Or I guess I should call it laning phase ADC. Yeah, I do like the Lucian. I think Hansama has uh, shown proficiency on that in the past. Alistair is going to be the pick for Gorilla. And uh, I think the question is, do you save your AD carry for the second rotation? or do you pick something up right now? It looks like they are cycling through AD carry, so maybe Han Summer will get his hands on something a little bit spicy. I mean, the most important uh, part for Misfits has always been their bottom lane, so I don't actually mind them having early rotation on bot lane, especially because Featherman has shown such a propensity towards blind picking his mid laner. It's not super important that uh, he can get the counter pick. That's true, that's true. It is going to be the Lucian that you predicted coming out for Hans Summer. Akali on the menu as well for G2. Haven't quite locked that in yet, but we have seen it come back to the four on 9.5. Instead, Thresh will be the lock-in for G2. So very strong bottom lanes either side here. I think we're going to see a lot of action down there. But now who's going to get the stronger, jung uh, stronger jungler in this uh, possible 3v3 on the bot side of the map? Because you can see it. It's very clear what both teams can do. They can just murder each other outright into the bottom lane. Thresh, Raven, Lucian, Alistar. It's going to come down to execution about how we're going to play it. So are we going to see some Olafs? Are we going to see some Jarvins, some, some Sejuanis? A Rek'Sai would fit nicely. I do love a good Rek'Sai. Yeah, going to see Jankos pick that one up. I believe it's the second time he's played it. One last time, 6-0-5 on that champ. Yeah, the big team that's been uh, pushing the Rek'Sai, of course, is Origin and Cold. What I love about Rek'Sai is while she still kind of has this tendency that people say she just drops off a cliff after a certain time, that she's still much more an early game jungler, it's just the uh, passive control that she really offers teams with her trimmer sense. So you don't have to get that forward aggressive vision. You can actually just have control over a river and still get so much information and knowledge. So she works really well for tracking or intelligent junglers, and Yankos can certainly fit into that wheelhouse. He definitely can. Being probably one of the best junglers across the course of the split up there, maybe with Broxer now as well, who's really stepped up. Xerxes, a very good jungler in the last few weeks as well. The Jarvan will be the lock-in for Misfits. We're getting into that second ban phase. Akali taken off the menu. I wanted Vi. I'm disappointed. How dare they play standard in their last game? It's a flex pick. Could be Vi jungle, could be Jarvan top. I mean, for all we know, it could be Alistair mid. Like, let's be honest, neither of these teams playing for anything in terms of standings. It's about the pride. Yep. It's definitely about the pride. We'll well, see. What a crazy world. You think like this matchup at the beginning of the split has completely different context and connotations as it does now. This was probably one of like the hypest matchups going into LEC. Everyone's like, Misfits are a super team. G2 are the actual super team. Just sprinkle that word on six yep. more times and how the mighty have fallen that yeah. this is where we end. I mean, even G2 have kind of fallen off in the second half of the split. You know, lost four games uh, relatively recently. And so I think Although this game doesn't matter too much in terms of uh, stakes, you are still looking, as you said, at Pride. At, you know, just a bit of momentum coming into our off week next week. A lot of smiles on G2's face, though. And I feel like it's always a terrifying game when you look over and they're all cackling with laughter. Especially when you have the option for a counter pick here for either your top or your mid laner, right? Because you've got the Aurelia ban, you've got the Akali ban, Renekton and Poppy taken away. I remember Vedius talking perhaps about a possible Jax pick when you're getting rid of the Renekton. Is always a, an option for these teams as well. I do like Azir. I think Azir works really well with um, teams that are struggling with team fighting because he just offers so much free zone control and stall potential. Okay, okay. 
Uh, and it's not going to be as if for the moment. Instead, will be the Elise. So expect it to be Jarvan top Elise in the jungle. Two very strong early game junglers coming out here. Which now means that Wonder recognizes that there's a high potential that he will be dove. It's one of the strongest things about Elise Jarvan is that you're mixing your damage profiles, AD and AP. And so it's really hard to itemize early four in the lane phase. Um, and if they ever get the push advantage, the ability to dive with how much damage into juggle tower aggro with um, repel is super strong. So Wonder needs to pick something that he feels so comfortable going 2v1 against, or at least in uh, avoiding a possible dive. Right, it's going to be the Camille for Wonder. He's only played that once already, this split, but it's a very strong pick for him across the board. Look I almost think it's like a signature pick for yeah. uh, Wonder as well, for how much he terrorized with this champion at Worlds. Definitely did. The split push Camille was one of the reasons G2 made it as far as they did. Zoe's going to be locked in for caps as well. Looks like there's a, a lot of ex explosive burst damage coming out from this G2 lineup. You look at the Draven, you look at the Rek'Sai, Camille, Zoe, all of them known for being able just to take out their targets in the 1v1 and in those smaller skirmishes. There's also a ton of control through the mid lane. The fact that you have Zoe and Rek'Sai, again, if you think about Rek'Sai as kind of this early game jungler that naturally gives a lot of control, one of the cool things about Zoe is how she controls the rap, uh, the ramps into Raptor camps mm -hmm. and into Early River because um, of the reach of her Sleep Trouble Bubble. So her in tandem with Rek'Sai, you can almost never walk into River unless you have perfect information about where Yankos is because if Zoe ever catches you, you're dead. That sleep can be just absolutely devastating. And Syndra is the final pick for Forbidden. Going to play that into the Zoe. It's not a matchup we've seen too often across the course of this spring split. I want to take a moment just to have a look at exactly how these teams are going to fight. We talked about lots of pressure coming through the bot lane. Top lane, maybe the dive target for Misfits. Mid lane, the stronger 2v2 for G2. If you wanted to see Misfits go out on a bang, this is exactly the type of composition that you want. You have uh, Febavin on a carry-oriented stat check mid laner. Do you have more health than my R? If yes, you live. If no, I win. And he's just going to rock into the jungle when he's level 6, level 9 with the Elise and have automatic pressure there. You've got dive potential between Maxlor and Soaz. How devastating Jarvan and Elise can be. And you have the ultimate uh, comfort pick in Alistar and Lucian for Han Sama. Misfits got everything that they want. Now it's about execution which unfortunately has been the thorn in their side for nine weeks now. It definitely has been. I mean, even yesterday against Splice, we saw them have a really strong early game. They got the Lucian ahead in the bottom lane. They were able to force Splice back, and they weren't able then to translate that into a victory. I think Amazing put out a tweet and said, Misfits have two game strategies. Either you throw at Baron or you throw at Nasha. Well, hopefully they don't approach it at all today. Yeah, and on the other side, it's pretty much comfort pick and very standard uh, across from G2. The one thing is is that showcasing that they have been practicing the rec side, so curious to see how Yankos is going to perform on that champion. But otherwise, nothing too out of the woodwork. You don't expect G2 to show anything going into playoffs. They've already secured their spot as number one, so they're going to Rotterdam at very least, and they want to keep everything close to the chest means that they'll be playing in that one versus two match as well in three weeks' time to determine whether they go straight through to the final, whether they have to play in the Saturday semi-final in Rotterdam. It's going to be a big match. We'll see that second seed decided later on today. Still a lot of permutations, a lot of tiebreakers possibly for us. Thankfully, this game doesn't determine whether we get any more ties later on today. I want to just have a quick look across the runes and masteries Is that here. unsealed spellbook it on Draven? It is unsealed spellbook on Draven. And I've, like, I've seen a bit of Klepto Draven recently. I know that works because you can use your blood rush and then you get the Klepto stacks off. I've seen a lot of Conqueror Draven, of course, for the extra damage. I will honestly tell you, I can't remember the last time I saw an unsealed spellbook Draven. I'm curious what he's also specced into in terms of if he took Futures Market. I know that occasionally is something that Dravens are specking into so that they make sure that they get an early Bloodthirster on their backs. So we're going to keep track of Perks' Summoner spells. Getting that uh, early BF Sword, early Bloodthirster actually does give you a lot more damage in the lane, gives you some priority as well. But I'm going to quickly just jump onto our stats page so that we can find out exactly where he has specced. And while I do that, Frost, I'd like you to talk, because I'm really bad at typing and talking at the same time. I don't know, this narration is working out excellent. Thank you. <laughs> um, essentially, you're getting a springboard start from Maxlor. A lot of the uh, tempo is what I'm going to call it, that is going to be set, obviously, by the jungler, especially on a champion like Elise, which is so well known for her ganks. And she has so much easy gank setup. You know, you've got the Scat of the Week from Syndra. You have an Alistair in the bot lane. Again, the flag and drag with Jarvan. So they just want to make sure that he's able to clear his jungle as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. get the necessary levels, and then get into the lane. And it's also not so important that her bot lane 
gets uh, ahead or gets pushed because you can open up perks and promise queue to a possible gank if they push too far forward. So I actually like the decision to pull the bot lane, whereas promise queue and Thresh didn't have to leash for Rek'Sai. Well, didn't have to leash uh, for the moment. You can see Rek'Sai still on that bottom side, going for the Krug. Scuttlecrab is secured by Max or early on. Looks like he's going to path towards top. Uh, Jankos is running the Conqueror Rek'Sai on 9.5. We've seen a little bit of debate as to whether you could run, you know, press the attack or hail of blades now the Conqueror was nerfed. I, I mean, know... the debate was pretty one-sided with Ender. Yeah, Ender's usually wrong about these things, but because he was on the playtest team for so long, he likes to think that he was I'm right. I'm not going to flame him while he's not on cast to defend himself, but hold on, good ward. Yeah, good ward there from Caps. It looks like just spotting out Max or on that possible first rotation. You know that Elise is going to want to be towards the top side of the map because of that dive potential we talked about with the Jarvan. Max was actually going to get double scuttle here. Nyankos coming in for an early gank. Are they going to look for the tower dive here? Only three minutes in. Oh, this is brutal. Okay, I said that they weren't experimenting too much with the draft, but it looks like we're going to be experimenting with uh, what we can get away with. You can already see a huge CS differential in that bottom lane as well. There's a big wave pushed in here, but you're probably going to look at 9, 10 CS difference in the bottom lane. Hook's going to land here onto Gorilla, pulls him back. He's uh, down to about so 200 damage. HP. Draven just shredding through the Alistair. Maxor may be looking for that top lane dive as junglers are on the opposite sides of the map. And here we go. Who is going to strike first? Rexai down on his way towards the bottom lane. Here goes Max Law. Wonder. Dodging away as much as he can. Tactical sweep flashes away. So as there. Doesn't land the EQ. Knock up the tanking up the tower. There's the repel. Burst blood goes down in the bottom lane. And so as tanks up a lot of shots. <laughs> Wonder gets the 2v1 outplay. Meanwhile, bot lane. Both Hans Summer and Gorilla die. It's a double over to Yankos. And it still continues to be the Thorn and Misfit side. Execution. The fact that that flagging drag didn't hit when Camille had already used the flag is devastating. How is it? That's what they need to have happen. And meanwhile, while they fumble the dive topside, it's a win bot side for G2. That it is. Look at that gold lead already. That's two. Two kills on Rek'Sai. So, so strong. Four minutes in the game. But he has he has got a bounty now. So you would get an extra 150 gold if you killed the Rek'Sai. Okay, let's see what happened here. I'm sure we didn't miss our pivotal CC. Okay, thank you, Tower. Knock up. Pretty clean and easy. It is nice that they managed to uh, oh, grab the Thresh as Yankos well. is here. Soaz does have the flash. Still is going to flash onto Wonder. Flash. The auto attack isn't enough, and Soaz can't get in range. Three kills. Now over to Yankos on the Rex side. We said it was going to be an early game battle. It's a bloodbath already, Frost. I was speaking sarcastically when I said good flash. Well, it, if you flash and then you get the, uh, I think it's Martial Cadence, his auto attack empowerment. I know what he passive. tried to do, but he wasn't going to have enough to burst him. That's true. Because That's you true. thought that if he just flashed and tapped him once with the auto, that he'd be able to execute. But this is now uh, gone from bad to worse for poor Soaz up here. Yeah, this is the replay. You can see Wonder jumps in. Uh, Pomisky was on his way up here as well. Jankos just goes across the wall. And so it's trying his hardest, trying his darndest but just didn't have the damage to kill off Wonder. Yeah, and now the unfortunate thing is he's also sitting up there without a flash. So the only silver lining is that the wave was pushed into him, um, but he has missed so much experience, so much gold. That could have been devastating as well. And it feels like across the map, before this game has even begun, everything has been ripped open by G2. It definitely has. Already a phage on Wonder, a 15 CS lead, four perks in the bottom lane over Han Sama as well. And we did see the priority come onto this Lucian Alistair. We thought maybe Misfits would be able to play through that bottom lane, but hasn't worked out for them at all so far. And it's going to be really hard when you're missing your summoners like that, and the wave is already pulled in for G2. You can see that Perk's just taking a sweet time. Eventually, it will push back, but he's in no real danger right now. Not at all. Uh, do you just think that G2 are going to continue to do this over and over again. Maxwell was here, uh, spotted out by Yankos with the Tremor Sense. Talked about how you can use that to just track the enemy jungler, but Wanda continuing to trade onto Soez. We saw how devastating he could be yesterday in, against Whippo in that Rise versus Gangplank matchup. He had almost a 200 CS lead at one point in that game. And it's disaster because you have to think who will actually answer the Camille into a side lane. I know it's only six minutes in the game, so we shouldn't be looking that too far forward, but I'll hold the thought. He's okay. Yeah, yeah Pokes gets lanterned out. Maxwell is going to be spotted on this ward here as well, so it's pretty easy for them to escape. Again, looking to uh, how this plays post lane phase. Feathervin can't do anything against a Camille on a Syndra. She doesn't have the mobility built in on the map. So you either have to put multiple members to deal with Wonder or uh, Misfits, because they fumbled the early game dive so poorly, have actually just put this game on a timer. I saw that. No one else? Yeah, no one else saw it. It's fine. Promise Q's hit every hook so far this game. Yeah. Counts if you hit them onto minions. Right? Nailed that minion. <laughs> That's what I tell my solo teammates. Uh, did see the plate go down in the bottom lane, so Misfits uh, and there's still 1,500 gold ahead. It's a very big lead for G2. I have had the runes come in, by the way, Frosk. There is no futures market coming out on Draven. He's gone for the magical footwear, biscuit delivery, and cosmic insight. So a bit of extra cooldown reduction, some free booties, 
because he couldn't afford Yeezys yet and uh, the extra biscuits for the mana regen and the health regen. I do love magical footwear on Draven because I feel like he is a champion that's so reliant on movement speed. It's one of the reasons why it's built into his kit um, so he can safely collect those axes and chase down opponents. Yeah, you do get that little bit more movement speed from the enhan enhanced enchanted boots. They're slightly more special boots than the usual boots you would get. So it does help you out just that little bit, but you have to wait until you can get them, of course. So, of course, what you can see Caps doing here is he's pulling in the minion wave, and you see the immediate respect that Febivin has. Now, the nice thing is, is that he still has his cleanse as well as his flash, but without perfect information about where the enemy jungler is, um, or even in a second where the enemy support is, he just has to give that away. Maxwell here with the flash cocoon. Hexagotomain was put down. This Cataclysm as well. Wonder very low. He will fall, and it looks like it's going to be a follow-up kill on Yankos as well. Good counter a gank from Maxwell. Finally, they get the shutdown on the Rexa. Also fighting in a massive minion wave right there. So finally, a bright spot of noobs for Misfits fans. Uh -oh. Maxwell lands another cocoon. Forbidden on his way across. Caps forced away. Misses the sleepy trouble bubble. Miles wide as Maxwell now jumps forward with the repel. And you see Soas on the chase. Caps will use the heal to escape. Kind of, um, I don't know if I want to call it arrogant of Caps. But walking into that river blind, knowing that Elise is on top side, a little bit sketchy right there, because you can see that it almost went sideways. And if people do want to try to nitpick about where the answers are to breaking G2, you do have situations like that. Definitely do. You can see here, just they get so as so low, but they, you talked about it's massive. Meanwhile, Temple coming in from Perks with that unsealed spell, but he's not back, not underneath the tower. They're going to take Gorilla. The heal comes out. It's not enough to heal away from Hans Armour. Probably going to chase him away, but it's a one point trade in the bottom lane. We're only nine minutes into this game, and there are 10 kills on the board. We said that it was probably going to be very bloody game since neither of these teams are playing much for stakes, so it's just about flexing onto each other, and that seems to be the, uh, the go to right yep. now. It's the primary identity from both teams. Gold even out as well, as we saw Misfits being able to eke back the advantage that G2 had gained. And now, it actually, across the board, things are pretty even. You can see Lucian back in terms of CS. Top lane's even. Mid lane's pretty even as well. A little bit of a lead, maybe for Forbidden. Yanko's trying to get a gank in here, but Maxwell's on his way. There's a blast coming from Skews just waiting around the wall. Misses the hook. Now Yanko's going to try and chase onto Han Summer, but Han Summer still has the flash. There's the lantern. Bromus Q caught up in the cocoon. Flash in from Yanko's trying to take down Han Summer, but he can't get close enough. Maxwell almost goes down, but the repel comes out, and now Han Summer on the chase. Gorilla there. Void ah. rush used from Yanko's to jump onto the back line. He gets healed up. Forbidden gets him with the scud of the week now, and it's the 3v3 fight in the bottom lane. G2 are going to retreat. Forbidden still has the ultimate if he wants to jump in. Bromus Q takes a Spear to the back, and the Bibbon will not go for the full-on dive. But this can mean a lot of plates because there's a big minion wave behind them, as well as a, I was going to say full mana Syndra, but depending on how much gold Hansama is sitting on, maybe he's close enough to his Bork that they don't want to try to sit around for the plates, and they instead want to get the item back advantage so they can leverage it for uh, Infernal. You can see it was about a thousand gold on Hansama. He's gone back, picked up the Blade of the Ruin King. And, yep. uh, that's a big spike in terms of damage for him. Still no Bloodthirster on to Draven, but he does have 700 gold or so. And again, it's the decision of, do we want to take the plates right now, or do I already have the uh, power that I want, and now we can use this to force the Infernal next time Maxor makes his rotation down to bottom side. The Vivian was caught out with a Sleepy Trouble Bubble, but Maxor, unrelenting, continues to pressure in here against Yankos. Caps dodges out the Scatter of the Week almost perfectly. The Unleashed Power will come out as well. The stat check. Oh, Caps has to use the Flash. And a little bit more. One more auto attack would have been enough to take him out. Perfect rotation and timing from Misfits. We talked about Syndra level 6 and also Syndra level 9 to give her, um, what is it, empowered damage? Yep. So once you have that big cannon behind you in your mid lane champion, it's going to be a pretty standard play from all professional teams that on Syndra's level 9 that you just pick her up and walk her into the jungle, and you can see how powerful and potent that is for Misfits right there. In case anyone doesn't know Syndra's passive, when she reaches max rank, I'll wait to talk about it just after this happens, yeah, when she meets, reaches max rank in any skill, they get empowered, so her Q gets 15% more damage, her W does 20% true damage, her E, the spell Wit, increases by 50%, and her Ult, I believe, has an increased range as well. So everything so, gets more powerful the more levels you put into it. The short of it is, for solo Q at level 9, don't mess with Syndra. Yeah, don't get hit by a Q. Yankos trying to come in here with the bow, we'll land it. Forbidden flashes away, Capsule has the Sleepy Trouble Bubble, but isn't going to use it. Forbidden gets underneath the tower with a flash of his own. Round 2. Here we go. Doesn't have flash. Is he going to overstep? Picked up the ghost. Max Law now coming in. Has the cocoon, but Caps can just portal jump away from it if it came down. So he's one of the most ridiculous champions. Jeez. I just think that for someone who does so much damage and is so terrifying, the fact that she skips everywhere. Yep. 
I mean, it's like Annie, right? We just don't see that much Annie these days. But uh, it's just this idea this very small child could just come and de demolish you in a second. Just delete you off Summoner's Rift. Now, pretty even game so far. Sleep's going to land here onto Max Lord for Biven. Does have the stat check button if he wants to go in. Max Lord just about to buy oh. as the cat gets taken out with the Elmish Power. Max Lord sidesteps as well. Yankos can't chase any further. Misfits with the fancy feet get out alive and pick up the G2 mid lane. Very well done from Maxo. For a second, I was like, why is he there? He doesn't have mid lane priority. He's walking blind into a brush. If he gets picked off here, he has no one to blame for himself. But very creative outplay to sidestep the uh, Prey Seeker there from Rek'Sai and good heads up play from Febivin. Because again, why is Maxor there? Well, because you like to fight and you like to get kills and that seems to be what this game is about so far. Maxor almost goes down this so ho 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 just walks out of the way of the Prey Seeker. Wonder and Soas still trading in the top lane, but that has even out now that Soas has been able to get himself a Black Cleaver. It looks like Draven and Thresh are on their way up here as well. The Hexagon may even come down. Promise Q looking for the flank position. As Soas will EQ away, but Promise Q puts the Lantern down. Whirling Death comes back. Flash straight into the flame from Promise Q. Perfect positioning there from the G2 sub. That could have been some very fancy footwork from uh, Soaz though, using the Cataclysm to try to dodge around, and I believe he flashed directly out of it, but unfortunately the flake did connect with him. If he had gotten away though, amazing. We've seen Soaz escape from that sort of situation so many times in the past. This split hasn't been his split, but still, Misfits looking in a relatively good position against G2 here. They've kind of got down into the dirt. They've said, okay, you want a bit of a street fight? We'll take it to you. And they're equalizing, they're matching G2 at every step. Well, they're reminding everyone why people got so excited about this Misfits roster, because the potential uh, talent ceiling is still obviously there when you do see some of these mechanical outplays, which in the first 14 minutes of play, we have seen some pretty crazy <laughs> things already. It's been pretty fun to watch. Let's have a look at where the items are. Blade of the Ruin King into Bloodthirst, the bot lane, so both AD carries have picked up that first item. A bit of a lead for Forbiven in the mid lane, though. Ludens Echo to no completed Ludens on the side of Caps. Junglers, it's a little bit of a hard one to tell because Maxor hasn't actually upgraded his jungle item. He prioritized getting the Sorcerer's Shoes first. Also going for the Dueling Smite as opposed to more of like the Utility Smite um, that Yankos is running. Uh, Papa Smithy actually had an interesting discussion about this, how more junglers are tending to go for the uh, Frozen Smite. Hold it though. Because Yankos is it doesn't matter if you it's have the Frozen that, Smite. <laughs> They can just chase you down. Infernal Drake started here by Soaz and Maxo as well, down towards the bottom side of the map. And Misfits actually seem to have the tempo advantage. They seem to be in control of this game now. I feel like the poor Observer is getting a bit of whiplash right now <laughs> because there's just fighting every second. It never stops. Oh! Soaz tried to put him in the cage, but Wonder was having none of it. Used the wall jump to get away. I'm pretty sure I can tell you what Twitch chat is spamming right now. Have you heard of T-Tours? Yeah. That is definitely what's going on. Forbidden caught out a little bit in the mid lane. Caps here. Flash in once again from Promise Q. Misses the hook. Forbidden. Ignited, but Caps. Oh, just misses the paddle star. It's been a story of missed skill shots this early game. Missed or dodged? Both. Okay, he missed the paddle star, yeah. but it was a good dodge from Forbidden on the hook. That, it's definitely true. That's definitely true. So 15 minutes in, game in Misfit's favor, but it feels pretty even. We didn't really talk a huge amount about scaling. We kind of focused on the early game and how teams would be able to uh, keep the tempo up. But and if you were looking at it now, do you give it to one team? I mean, in all honesty, Medic, there hasn't been a lot of room for conversation because it's literally just skirmish. Fight, 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 fight. <laughs> Rift Hell juice down towards the bottom lane, looking for that first tower, but I think Misfit's will get it up towards the top. They do. Plate's already down, so not really too much of a trade there. Just tower at four tower. Rift Hell is going to continue to push in as it dodges around the minion wave and blue buff stolen away. But I think next steps, you have to look at what Dragon's up next. It's an Infernal. Misfits will now want to maybe move down to playing towards this bottom side of the map uh, and try and open up getting that tier one tower in the bottom lane. The devastating thing is that once G2 do crack open lane assignments and they are able to um, manufacture skirmishes on an open map, this is where this, this team becomes very scary. Also helps that they have the likes of the Zoe. Caps lands the sleep. Yankos here as well, looking for the knockoff. Hans Sama waiting in the wings, but just can't do it. Caps. Chunked out with the Unleashed Power, but G2 able to find the pick they wanted. They now have a four-man stack in the mid lane. And they're just going to force Max Law away towards the top side of this one. And it looks so funny to see a Zoe go aggressive like that onto a Syndra, because you're thinking that if you get hit with that Scout of the Week, she's just going to blow you up. But the fact that Caps just recognized exactly um, what his responsibility was in that moment. All I need to do is hit the CC. All I need to do is get the Syndra to commit forward, because I've got, what, three members behind me, and it's an easy kill. 
do just want to remind everyone at home, although this game isn't going to affect the standing for either of these two teams, it does matter for SK and Schalke. If Misfits win this, they could force a three-way tiebreaker for sixth place, and the head-to-heads mean that Schalke would lock sixth. SK wouldn't even be able to play a tiebreaker game. Schalke would just be given the sixth place spot. So as trading here, the Hexagon Amazing is going to chase him down as Wonder has a slew of damage. So as continues to try and dodge around, maybe get away from Wonder because Maxwell is coming up. Wonder's going to jump forward. Maxwell misses the cocoon. Wonder with a quick reaction to go back, repels up the chases on as Soas comes in as well. Wonder down to half HP is going to use the flash. That is a good counter gank from the Misfits jungle. Maxwell is trying to play uh, red zone defense on virtually every single lane. It feels like this guy has been everywhere. Both junglers have been all over the map. Actually, Yankos, after having a very strong start, the last few times he's uh, tried to make something happen hasn't always worked out. Teleport used here by Wanda. So is waiting, but I don't really think you want to go for the full-on dive against the Camille. Promise you, maybe looking for the hook here as Hans Summer dodges away. Yankos on the flank. Trying to make a play happen up towards the top side. So, oh, Wonder Cocoon. So is there with the chase. The CC combo into the dunk. The Doom Room coming out. For Biven just gets the 1v1 mid with the ultimate as well. And the gank in the top lane didn't work out for G2 at all. And finally, uh, Soas has really climbed his way effectively back into this game with the help of his jungler, Maxor, right there. Uh, brilliant that they had the control ward set up to walk into the brush. Obviously, Wonder thought that they had taken their backs, that he could approach the wave. Then right on cue for the burst damage. Very well done. And this is the Misfits that you would have wanted to see across the course of the split, taking down uh, the team that is sitting at the top of the E of the, I was about to say EULCS, of the LEC. You have one job, Medic. <laughs> Don't say EULCS. It's the first time I've really messed it up this split. I'm pretty proud of myself. I which, think... Uh, I, I'm always like, you stop and you freeze, like, which replay is it going to be? <laughs> He gets it off even before the sleep comes out, though. I was like, I'm drowsy, but before I go to sleep, before I have my nap, I'm going to pick myself up a little bit. Crazy off mechanical outplay yeah. there. It's next level. Three and one on the Syndra now in the mid lane, going towards that Morello Nomicon. Misfits have opened up all the tier ones, which mean with 30 seconds on the Inferno, they'll try and get some vision around here. Yankos was trying to do a little bit just to sneak in a ward or two, but can't really get too much. And Misfits looking for their second Infernal of the game. And while this game has been so chaotic, again, we're basically on time for a kill a minute just underneath it right now, although I think we're going to change that up. Nope, didn't connect. Um, Misfits haven't really had a lot of stock or control in the map. They've been very reactive to the pressure that G2 have been putting mm -hmm. onto it. Now, at this point, though, I feel like Misfits can grab a bit more of the bull by the horns and start to drag the map around because they've got uh, good wave clear options as well as core itemization virtually across the board. Yeah. So. I hope that Misfits not necessarily slow the game down, but get to be a bit more purposeful in how they're setting up their plays. Oh, Yankos is trying to set up a play up towards the top side. So as caught out with the sleep, we'll put the Cataclysm down. Yankos won't be able to escape from this one. Does have the flash, will burn it. You can see Gorillas up towards that top side as well. The tower's gonna fall. Han Summer jumping in onto Wonder. He'll use the wall jump to get away. Gorilla just killed Yankos with the ignite. He went in. The sleep comes out, but the unbreakable will from the Alistair will stop him from taking a dirt nap. And G2 playing around the top side. Misfits look like they might just be playing for the priority mid. Well, they've also got the double Inferno, so it makes sense that they're playing around mid lane since they basically just walked it off the, the dragon. I don't think they can shove this one down too far, though, since they don't have perfect information of where Wonder is. I think the uh, the gods of League of Legends have smiled. Oh, what? What? I feel bad for the observers this game. You can't track all of it. I was about to make a really funny joke about three Infernos, but the vice continues. Caps gets another kill for Biven will answer with one onto Wonder. Forbidden is 5-1 and one now on Syndra. There's no magic resist really coming out from the side of G2. You can see Caps has realized, like, holy moly, I need to get myself a little bit of a no magic mantle here. But G2 actually being put to the sword by Forbidden and Misfit. Yeah, Aranea, he called it. He wanted to see the Febby carry. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Syndra, fun champion. Okay, how many spells apart from the ult does he land? Two. Two is good. I'll take that. If you can land two skill shots and use your ultimate, you deserve to get that a kill. That must be my favorite spectator bug, where it's just like fiesta balls. <laughs> she's just juggling super fast. At the moment, she's juggling all the kills that she can carry. And a Morello Nomicon alongside the Luden's Echo now picked up. So Forbidden in a very strong spot. A third Infernal Drake is about to spawn. Well, we'll be spawning in just a few minutes' time. So I think the gods of League of Legends have realized this is a bit of, bit of a fiesta. And it's like, okay, have some more damage on top of your damage just to help you out. Oh, it's super fun skirmishes. Um, it's really cool, though, that you have triple infernal with uh 
Febivin being so fed on Cinder though, because obviously a champion like this loses all power in the game if she doesn't have kill pressure, but because it's a possible triple infernal, at least double infernal, Febby is always going to be relevant in this game. Yeah, I think if you give yourself 24% AP and AD, you definitely have quite a bit of burst damage. So it so soaks up the uh, Q there from the paddle star. Promise is going to soak up a lot of the curling as Yankos then steps in the way, but Misfits have the priority mid as they're going to push towards this tower. Wonder with the flank position, maybe G2 are going to try and take a 5v5 fight here. You can see Caps trying to land the paddle stars, can't quite connect. Wonder still though. Could go in. Yankos doesn't have the flash, but looking for the chase, they're just going to force Misfits back. The scary thing is that G2 don't have a traditional tank, so while they do have hard engage options like Wonder and the Hextech Ultimatum, um, he's a very squishy Camille. Gorilla's going to pop the Unbreakable Will here. Doesn't get hit with the Paddle Star. And that's why G2 are being so cautious about how they start these fights and are said hunting for picks. See, they found the pick onto Soas. He tried to get away, but Yankos on the chase. There's the Void Rush as well. Ra indeed, Ross, <laughs> as Yango sinks, sinks in the fangs. Good kill for G2. They're going to answer with the tower mid as well after Misfits were the ones putting the pressure down just a moment ago. Only 100 gold between these two teams at the 24-minute mark, and although Misfits have the kill lead and the double infernals, G2 still continues to claw their way back into the game. And G2 can also have great Baron setup. So we talk about G2's ability to play an open map and how they play around these objectives, especially on this type of composition. You said no traditional tank, though. Gorilla's going to get hit with a sleepy trouble bubble. Maxwell lands the cocoon, but Gorilla taken very low already. Great knockback though from Bebiven. He stopped them in their tracks, but still, still Caps will land the Paddle Star. Stat check, Caps survives with the Lantern, and G2 find another pick. It does at least stave off the Baron for now, however. Um, misfits at this point, of course, we always talk about it. You need to get mid lane priority. Then they want to walk into that Baron area, clear out all of that vision and how important it is to G2's composition, since this seems entirely the Caps and Zoe show. Definitely is. I'd like to see Perks really unleash in one of these fights as well. He's going up towards the Infinity Edge. You know, Bloodthirst to Infinity Edge on a Draven can be pretty devastating. I'll be honest, I haven't seen the use of the Unsealed Spellbook that much yet. He had one teleport. He changed it to Barrier as well. Okay, cool. So maybe he used... Oh, maybe for the Syndra, I guess. Having a Barrier is quite nice. Yeah. If you do get uh, Unleash Powered, but... I still think something like a Conqueror would have been better. I'll be honest. Keep your Flash up more often. Get to spam your Summoner Spells more. I don't know, I can think of perks. Okay, um, so Gorilla's gonna jump in here, gets the three-man knockup, Maxwell with Cocoon as well, and Misfits find the perfect fight, they take two. Easy pickings for Misfits. Maxwell gets the double, so as there, as Wonder flashes away as well, but Inferno Drake on the cards in just 26 seconds time. Because this is the thing, they don't have a traditional tank, so a traditional team fight is actually devastating for G2. Oh, it's is this, oh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but Misfits are going for Baron. Calm down. They're going for Nasha. Yankos is dead. Okay, but Caps is alive and Perks is alive. I've seen this story before. Here we go. Okay. Okay, Misfits going for it. But there's no one there's no one getting near them. I think they've got it. I think they might have it. First time in three weeks Misfits will have secured a Baron without throwing the game. Can they do it? 2,000 HP left on it. They're giving up the Infernal Drake, but that's okay. 2,000 HP still there. Max is still tanking it. Can Misfits? Oh, want that. Someone one. help him. Misfits tanking it. Are they? Oh! Golf clap for Misfits. They lose the Infernal Dragon, but they were trying to get the push down towards the bottom lane. I'm not sure why everyone ran away as quickly as they did. They were setting up the minion wave so they could immediately rotate off of the Baron and into the tower pressure. Okay. So, again, it's bang for your buck. So, so as though, hello. Caught out in the Hexagon to made him. He's going to die, but that means Misfits can push in the other lane. But they don't have a minion wave big enough to actually really do too much, and Yankos was there to stop it. So as a little bit of a wry smile on his face as he falls for the fifth time at this game. Still a sizable uh, lead for Misfits now yep. being set up. They've got the Baron, they can continue to try to force in. And because their team fights are so strong at this point in the game, they could still relatively uh, or easily end this game on the next team fight if G2 get caught out in a bad position. So G2 still need to be much more respectful of the hard engage potential that Misfits have on this composition, as well as the raw damage that they'll do right now with Febby Syndra. Three items on Han Summer as well. Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire Cannon, and the Blade of the Ruin King. So just looking for all that burst damage. Usually you'd see a Black Cleaver on the Lucian, but we've talked about it. There's no real tank on the side of G2, so you don't need the extra armor shred on top of your extra damage. And this was the old school kind of like scaling Lucian build, if mm -hmm. you want to use it loosely. Um, so what G2 are trying to do while Misfits kind of reset their map is they're running to all the individual lanes and they're trying to force the waves to get uh, Misfits to respond to different kind of bleeding points on the map, which is why you see Soaz right now with the TP clearing top lane. 
and they're just trying to delay and stall out and burn up enough of this Baron as possible. Whirling Death used there by Perks just to clear out the minion wave, but there's another one coming in. It's a cannon wave, so they're just pushing forward. Perks gets away, has the cleanse now out of the unsealed spell, but the tower's gonna fall. Soas on his way down, tower's still alive. You can see Wonder has a flank position here, Soas. Has got the teleport, but if Wonder can get in behind them, maybe Jisoo can fight a fight. And it's basically one big paddle star away from Wonder feeling confident enough that he could start that fight. And looks like Wonder's going to go towards mid lane here. Maybe he wants to steal away the blue, maybe just sneaking around because Caps is on his way as well. So as put into the Hex, they go to Matum. Caps chasing in here. The paddle star will take them out. What can Misfits get down towards the bottom lane? It's a 3v4 in their favor, but they have to go for the fight you feel because Wonder and Caps are on their way. Yeah, you already see the on the way ping, so they know that they're about to be flanked. You need to get this and get the hell out. Can they get out if they get it though? Because Caps will be on the chase. There's the sleepy trouble bubble. It lands onto the one target you don't want it to. It's Han Sama caught out by Yankos. The chase comes up to the top side of the fight, and you can see Caps is already fallen. Hunt Summer flashes away, and G2 have forced them off the inhibitor, but aren't able to get any kills. Overcommit just slightly there from G2. Didn't really time how they're going to do the pencil maneuver, but you can see the immediate respect that Misfits give them. Forbidden was waiting in the bush just to see if Yankos overstepped, had the unleashed power. And uh, 28 minutes in, two kills in it, but a 5,000 gold lead now for Misfits. Probably the biggest lead they've had in a while as they look to shut out G2 from this game. And now all they need to do is actually close a game, okay. which, again, has been the other thorn in Misfit's side. Um, it feels like they're team fighting. I know Vettius talks about it all the time. He specifically is looking at members like Maxlor and Gorilla, who have been recently underperforming to the expectations that a lot of fans had for them, and their target selection in fights, which is why when Vettius sees a composition like this from Misfits, it's super easy to execute hard engage, because it's basically point and click, yep. the Elise a little bit more difficult. Um, but this is what you want to kind of band-aid some of those issues that they've had in team fights. Maxwell are looking for the burst potential out of this Elise as well with the Medjai's 10 stacks sitting on it. It's going towards the Zonia's next. Almost a death cap for Forbidden as he sits on the double needlessly large rods. And you, you have to think if it's a full 5v5 and G2 don't get a good flank off, Misfits win. Right? They, they just have the stronger front line in the form of the tank. Uh, in Gorilla, they have a huge amount of burst damage that G2 shouldn't be able to really mitigate. Unfortunately, I'm just of the opinion that Zoe is broken right now. Okay. I think that she is just an absurd champion. Now, um, she's not free because you can't just blind pick her as easily. She's still very easy to blind pick, though. But I think the utility, the damage, especially when you put her in the hands of a professional player like Caps, um, you can see how devastating she can do. She could basically be like a one-man army, like Spider-Man holding the door. <laughs> what, this is just the train that he yeah, tries to fall into? Uh, he also, in I think in the Homecoming one, doesn't he hold a boat together for a while? And then Iron Man comes to save him? My Something Marvel like knowledge that. is not the best, I'll be honest. I just uh, think that cruise ship. Okay. she offers too many tools um, to professional players and professional teams that you don't necessarily get to see that full power put on showcase in solo queue. And when you've got someone like Caps playing it as well, you know that he's going to try and use that to its potential. Uh, QSS finished on perks alongside the cleanse that he's got, so if he does get caught out, he's going to be able to escape pretty quickly. It seems like Misfits have slowed down the game just a tad. They're getting some pressure in the side waves. They no longer have the Baron buff, but maybe trying to catch out Caps here as Gorilla goes in. He's got the Banshees. The sleep's going to land. Caps flashes across the wall. Has the Lantern to get out as well. He forces Gorilla low. And uh, with the Whirling Death not quite connecting, Hans Summer on the chase here. The Cullen comes out, but it's only going to hit onto Yankos who tanked it up. The Redemption used as well by Promise Q to keep his carries alive. Because, I mean, think about that. That was essentially the one-man show from Caps, the amount of damage that he was able to put on, the fact that he was able to get to safety. Yes, Promise Q did assist with the Lantern, but that's the power of Zoe, and it means that if Misfits ever contest the Baron and Caps is in the area, uh, I mean, you, you talked about it, you like gripped the desk, you're like, oh no, Misfits in a Baron, the Zoe is alive. She's basically what stalled out this game so far. Misfits gonna get their third dragon of the game uh, with the ocean. It's not so powerful later on, but always, you know, a little bit of extra mana regen and health regen is helpful for you as a team. I mean, I think it's more so about opening up another win condition. Yeah. Um, Misfits don't want to fight in the lane. You can see that that's where Zoe is terrorizing them. They want to fight uh, out by monster objectives and kind of the arena because they want the all-in engage. So if they can open up the Elder Dragon and get another lure, if you will, yep. if they play their macro game correctly, then that just gives them another opportunity to punish G2 with a team fight composition. And we're continuing to go along at a killer minute this game as well. So both teams very bloodthirsty. You can see Misfits. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All of G2 are alive. No vision on it. Misfits start up the Baron down to 8,000 HP already. Are they going to spot it out? Promise Q's in the wings. Yankos on his way as well, but maybe Misfits. A strong Baron call here will secure it. G2 unable to answer. 
not fast enough to get there in time. Lost vision control of the area. G2 haven't had mid priority pretty much yep. this entire game. So while Zoe is doing a good job at least clearing in front of her base, she's not assisting and actually pushing these waves forward as Wonder finally gets an opportunity. And this is what we saw from Wonder in Worlds on the Camille as well, right? Just split push, let the rest of the team try and deal with the advancing enemy. So this is going to put Misfits in a hard spot where eventually they're either going to get desperate and try to force an engage and end the game. Oh, like they might just catch up perks though, not quite enough damage to QS is away. The teleport coming in behind them, now Misfits need to retreat. Soas has a counter TP, but he can't stop Wonder. And Misfits maybe just trying to get out of this one. Soas clearing out the wave, the sleep lands onto him, but immediately he cleanses away. Caps has the paddle star, there's the TP. And Misfits will try and reset it, and just using the TP to force G2 away. Oh. Okay, they're going to go for the push. They broke the inhibitor tower. They know Wonder is no longer with the team. Gorilla's going to heal up, of course, with that Ocean Drake, so he has the opportunity just to heal up a little bit. And they will push for the inhibitor. Wonder in the mid lane, G2, I think, have just given this one up. They know they can't fight the full 5v5, so instead, they sacrifice their inhibitor, and they let Wonder get a bit of time on the mid lane tower. Yeah, but the thing is, is they can't rotate anywhere else, so it's a single inhib, and now their backs may actually be cancelled. Oh, that's what you're hoping for, G2 here. Can't quite cancel Gorilla, and Max Law gets away as well. Wonder already got that tower very low. Not gonna quite have enough, he has to dodge away from the cocoon, but... G2 just trying to get those little bits of advantages where they can. And he also needs to respect the fact that Max Lord is sitting on the Tim Magi, so it's not like he's just looking at a tank jungler and yeah. a tank support and can try to force that tower. He needs to respect the burst potential coming out of Max Lord's Elise. And now the uh, waiting game continues for G2. They know they've lost that inhibitor. They know Super Minion is going to push in top. Misfits will try and play around mid prio, bot prio, and then allow those Super Minions to keep the pressure up in the top lane for themselves. Elder Dragon, the next one on the menu. I think that spawns around 35 minute mark or so. Maybe just a little bit after. But it should be kind of this similar rotation from Misfits. Um, G2 constantly do a good job that not more than one wave is ever prepped for Misfits, so it's not like they can take a tower and then, I've prepared this earlier, you know, pull another minion wave out of the oven, it's ready to go. They have to go back and say, ah, oh, you know, Wonder shoved up our mid lane, now we need to waste time resetting our map, getting everything back into order. And that's why Misf or G2 are constantly able to stall out games. You know, that's how they put themselves in situations where they lose three inhibs and they almost beat Fnatic. Their ability to play from behind is so impressive. I mean, the risk is, though, they know that G2, they know that Wonder doesn't have a teleport now, so Misfits could just hard force. They could just go for the full 5v4. They need to. They actually just need to stop getting chunked out, take the play, and, like, flash initiate. But already getting chunked out, like, they're oh. losing that tiny window to find the confidence to do that. Oh, so it has the flank here as they try and jump onto Caps. He goes golden. There's a Lantern waiting for him. Can't click it in time, though, and Hans Summer will get the kill. And now Misfits in a 5v4 are going to push for the inhibitor. Maybe even for a little bit more. They could just rotate to mid, but instead, with the cannon wave, they clear out one more wave. They go for the Nexus Towers. G2 forced back once again. You can see Perks trying to get the damage off. Soaz jumps into Cocoon Lands, but Perks going to cleanse it away. They should feel really confident right now because Soaz uh, on Jarvan still has the full G8. Here comes Hansama. The Bivens still has the ultimate as well. Hansama opens up, but the ultimate, the got it. power to the base of Perks, the shutdown as well. Soaz jumps forward, and you have to think this is game over for G2. The first 0 2 week of the split for our top team in Europe. As Misfits show, they may be out of playoffs, but they are still very much here to play. Eventually, they will hit the Nexus. <laughs> they don't need to. Get the kills. Keep it above a kill a minute, Frost. That's the important thing for them this game. They're going to wait around for just a second. They get the ace. We're in 8 1 of 5. And Misfits are going to let the Super Minions do the work for them. They're going for the dive. Caps. Oh, Caps is too good on Zoe. Gets the shutdown. In the end, Misfits do clean it up. They take down the Nexus and they take their final win of the split. Cheeky smile on Han Sama's face and an excellent performance from Febivin on that Syndra. And just good on Misfits to recognize the power that they had in their composition to pick up the Syndra when it was time, rotate them around to the jungle. They played a much cleaner macro game this time around, secured not just one, but two Barons. Yeah, much stronger performance from them. G2, I think, I don't think you put too much stead in this loss, right? Like, yes, it's their first day of two week, but they already locked top spot. They already know they're going to Rotterdam. They already know they're playing in that round One, two, two match for the second seed. And although this game would have given them, you know, a bit of momentum maybe coming into the weeks off, but they're still using a sub. Mickey's still out. You don't take too much harm if you're G2. And you know, throughout all of the context, 
because the game didn't have a lot of stakes for these teams, uh, it's still a bittersweet moment for a lot of Misfits fans yeah. because it feels like we've been waiting for this type of performance from um, the players for a long time. The fact that, you know, Soaz did fall into an early hole, but he kept his cool. Him and Maxwell are working together expertly to make sure that he could crawl, uh, crawl back into a position of power um, was pretty significant on the Jarvan and those team fights in the sidelines as well. The Misfits win as well does mean that we have the possibility of them playing spoiler a little bit for SK later on. We could have a three-way tie for that bottom spot in the playoffs. And if that happens, Schalke would take the playoff spot because of their head-to-head -head record in the three-way tie. So Misfits winning does actually bolster Schalke fans' hopes here a little bit. It means that you're more likely to make it into playoffs, but it's still not guaranteed. Also messes up everyone's predictions. Yep. Scumbags. So right, we don't need to get predictions right, okay? As long as I'm ahead of Quickshot, that's all that really matters to me. Okay, everyone take your foldy sheet. Oh, Quickshot went for Misfits! Ah, uh, he's catching up. He's catching up. Fold your foldy sheet in half. Misfits is now the victor. And you can look at the bottom side of your foldy sheet. So scenario 17 through 32 are the ones we are going to look at for the rest of the day. Well, after the break, uh, Law is joined by G2's Mickey for more on this game and his injury. I'm actually really looking forward to hearing from him. I know it's very difficult for our players because they do play a lot of games and wrist injuries are really common uh, for our players. Make sure you vote in the player of the game vote for the key player of the game. It's at Lolly Sports on Twitter. Forbidden, Maxwell and Gorilla are your options. Ooh, I actually think you have to give it to Febby. I think he had yeah. a standout performance on the Syndra. And, See. you know, Syndra, we can say, not the most mechanically intensive champion, although she can do some cool tricks. But you still got to hit your skills. Exactly. Hit his skill hit shots. Skills. He was exactly where he needed to be. He recognized how powerful he was. I say it's Febby. He did. Well, after falling rapidly in the standings of the last few weeks, Schalke and Nulfir have one last chance to secure playoffs. Find out if they can take down Rogue right after this.